Hey there, folks, it's Glendon again. Let's jump into stage three, LLC preparation and articles of organization, naming your company and to DBA or to not DBA. This is a big, big set of problems for many people. They get caught up on should I do a DBA or should I name this or should I do this? And the reason that people are confused is a lack of education. And I'm going to help you with that. I've seen people wait months because they didn't have the right name or they thought, well, you know, I don't want to do it now. I don't want to have to change the name. This is what's called procrastination based upon trying to be perfect. Come up with a name. You can come up with Ziggy LLC. You can call yourself Toilet Paper Incorporate. If you provide people service, it will work. You know, I'm being facetious, but just take a sheet of paper and write down 25 names and pick one out of 25 or 30. Or if you really feeling froggy, leap to 50 and you're going to come up with some good names that you can then name your company. DBA doing business as this is a fictitious name made up used to separate a sole prop from his business. If you're going to do this, because the thing is, you have to file this paperwork with the state. It costs the same as follow the LLC. So why go ahead and just get a fictitious name that you get a certificate to give to the bank to maybe put on your business license? I don't really see the point. There are times that it is good to use a DBA. Let's say you have a LLC that's about 15 years old and you're going to and you sell fertilizer, right? You know, it's Sam's fertilizer. And then your daughter comes up with this cosmetic line, but she wants to use your corporate credit, your corporate resources. So you go Sam's fertilizer DBA as Jennifer Cosmetics. OK, that makes sense. And then, but the thing is, it's already a corporation. It's just an extension of that corporation. And if I was part of that situation, I would say, hey, Jennifer, file your own LLC. You know, have your dad help you with a few things, but create a totally separate and distinct company. That's what a DBA is. It, it, it's just a simple tool to separate people who are sole props. Or maybe you want to start a business and be stealth. But here's the thing. You got to file that paperwork with the state. Now, if you form your LLC in Wyoming or New Mexico, nobody knows who you are. Uh, these are blind LLCs. But once again, if you have a lot of money and assets, this could be cool. But if you go to another state and try to use that blind LLC to say do business in Georgia, they're going to make you file as a foreign corporation and all your information is going to be out there anyway. So that dodge doesn't really work unless you already have a lot of money and a better plan. So you have a building or two or stuff that's paid off and you don't want anybody to know who owns it. You can go to New Mexico, Wyoming, do one of those LLCs and they, people can look all day long, but they'll never know who owns it. So in that way, it's really good. Now, while you're naming your company, I want you to go to your secretary of state and search for the name you want to give your company. You've done your 20, 30, 40, 50 names, right? You're now in a situation where you're going to start doing search. You want to make sure that your name is distinct. Um, and I know this may sound crazy because you sat there and you worked really, really hard, right? Someone may already have your name and that could be problematic in terms of putting up your website. So do this search and planning before you file anything, before you buy a domain, before you do business cards, because you may have to change that later. Now, here's something else, and I'm going to give you a template. Before you file anything, draft your company name and articles of organization in Word of Pages. Write this stuff out. Um, take your time, because one of the things that many people don't know is you can put whatever you want into these articles of organization. And what you can do is combine the articles of organization and the operating agreement into one account by giving roles to people and officers of the company in the articles of organization. Now, many of these online sites are not as robust as you would like. I recently had an issue with trying to file a second LLC doing what I did the first time and the state of Georgia has just become 
somewhat difficult with this and you'll have to mail this stuff in. Now, I didn't do a slide on it, but I'm gonna tell you what happens if you have, quote, a holding company, which would be like the parent company, and then you use the holding company's information. Let's say, I'll actually show you that when I give you the template on the articles of organization, how that works. Now, once again, uh, some of these online platforms will not allow you to put your articles or organization into the formation of an LLC online. You'll have to mail it in or fax it in. And more likely have to mail it in with a check. Just letting you know. Now, that's all tax deductible. That check, even the postage stamp. Okay, here are my articles of organization. And if, if you're feeling curious, you can go to the Georgia Secretary of State and check out Mac Daddy Media and you'll see this. Okay, Mac Daddy Media was formed under Cameron Strode Media. Now, what does that mean? And organized, I should say organized. Cameron Strode Media is an, an existing LLC. I put Cameron Strode Media as the organizer. See, when you're creating these LLCs, they're gonna ask you two things that seem kind of the same, but they're very different. There is the organizer and there is the filer. Anyone can file an LLC for you, but they can't go to the bank and open up an account. So I put the filer is Cameron Strode Media and the organizer was also Cameron Strode Media. Well, I think I put my name there. So you have to put a person's name. So I, I filed this. Now, when you do this, then the state of Georgia takes longer to approve it. It's just, you know, you, you, you will have to wait longer and they will make you, they will really look at your articles of organization. So I got this one pushed through. Now, the name of the child corporation is Mac Daddy Media, which is organized and filed by the parent company, Cameron Strode Media LLC. Mac Daddy Media is incorporated in the state of Georgia. Mac Daddy Media will lawfully operate perpetually, perpetually is forever. Mac Daddy Media is an online publisher and consulting agency. Now, there's other stuff that you can read, but here's the nitty gritty. Now, here's to Article 10. Mac Daddy Media is owned by Cameron Strode Media and is fixed at uh, 100,000 shares. So if I want to actually give out shares, I could. There's two of us. My daughter actually owns the company. And I put a par value of a million. Why did I put a par value of a million? Because, as we'll go down here, is Article 14. Cameron Strode Media has invested one million dollars and substantial intellectual property assets into the formation of mac daddy media llc this loan is without interest and only after repayment of this loan is will this company become profitable so by adding that and moving all of the youtube channels and stuff into this corporation i can make a million dollars and still not have to pay taxes because that's investment money this is the power of putting this stuff together. This is the power of knowing this. That's why when people talk about I'm paying too much in taxes, um, you, you really don't understand the power of paper and words in law and the rule of law. So that's how I did it. And this is somewhat of a template. Now, just to give you more direction, you would definitely do number one, number two, whatever state that you are organizing in. You will do three, uh, four, whatever you do, and some other stuff. Uh, where is it? Uh, let's see. I put, here it is. Article 11 is operated by Glendon Cameron, creative director. Glendon Cameron is wholly vested with the power to make all business decisions. Strategic financial for Mac Daddy Media LLC. Since that is in the articles, I can go to the bank, I can get loans and all this other stuff. And that's kind of it. You know, I'll leave this up for a second. Well, you can just pause the screen and see it. And if you have any questions and stuff, then, you know, once you become a member of the Facebook group, you can kind of draft up your articles. Because like I said, this is really simple. Now, if you went to an attorney for him to draft this kind of thing um, under a child, you know, to create a child corporation under a holding holding corporation, they'll charge you 1500 2500 to do this. Yes, because you have to do it in a certain format. You have to know what you can, what you cannot put in there. I mean, I put in there, you know, Mac Daddy Media is creating online shows, movies, content, books, audiobooks, and in the emerging form of media in the future. So if something new comes out, 
whatever that may be, we're prepared for that. Um, so that that's the deal right there. And that's what you do. And you can study this. You can tear it apart. You can go online, look at some other ones, because many people don't do this. They just do what I call flimsy LLCs by just filing through the state portal and not putting any of this stuff in here. So this is a combination of articles, of organizations and the operating agreement stating me, giving me the power to manage, to make all decisions, go to the bank and stuff like that, get loans and so on and so forth. OK, this is the end of stage three. If you have any questions about this, post it in the Facebook group and I will answer them.